Well, what a pleasure. I'm now joined by Noreen O'Sullivan and Patrick Stevens. Both welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us today. So IACP starts with the I, which is international. So how important is the international work of the IACP? I think it's a major part of the IACP. We are represented by 133 countries, different countries around the world as a member of the IACP. And they all um, try to benefit as much as they can from the products that IACP is offering for the membership. They do a lot of training, training in leadership. They make a lot of policies, model policies, which you can use in your own country. And of course, there's also the networking event, like this conference is a major event with 103 countries. It's a big deal to be here. Yes, I think it's very important, as Patrick says, you know, the, the challenges that police services the world over are facing are the very same. So everything from the current terrorism challenge to migration issues to community engagement and legitimacy. So it's very important that we have the opportunities to come here to learn, as Patrick has said, from each other, to look at the policies that are developing, particularly around the President's Task Force. And I think the lesson for us certainly in Ireland is that the, the challenges are all the same, but then to find opportunities to explore where the opportunities are and where there are the opportunities to learn from each other and to develop practices and uh, policies that will improve things. It's obviously uh, best practice is something everybody likes best practice and sharing of best practice, but it's easy to talk about sharing of best practice. Give me some concrete examples of, of where that has made a difference to you. Well, most recently in uh, spring of this year, we had the president of the IACP, Terry Cunningham, and his uh, vice president, Gwen Boniface, came to Dublin uh, to look at a, a major transformation programme that we are doing, which is looking at everything from cultural reform all the way to improving our technology. But a part that they were particularly interested was looking at our student training, um, particularly the, the introduction of values such as empathy, uh, community engagement, how do we achieve that? And we were giving them examples in Ireland uh, when we met them in Alexandria. So, for example, in April 2014, amidst a lot of controversy and crisis, trust and confidence in Angarja Khan had dropped to an all-time low of 67%. We had to set about restoring that trust and confidence because without the job that we all do, we have to have the support of the community. And by April of 2016, we were in a position where we had restored trust and confidence to 85%. So they were very interested in how do we do that. And a lot is really about the men and women uh, that provide the service to the community, the manner in which they engage with the community, and making sure that we do not take for granted the support and the trust of the community and how we restore and maintain that. Yeah, and I would like to add some other examples that ICP is doing uh, for the membership in all the countries. Uh, lots of our members, they struggle with the foreign fighters issue on terrorism, well, like you mentioned. Uh, there's a terrorism committee at the ICP and they make products, you know, to help the member states. Uh, they make a video to, give, to raise awareness in the local police uh, offices. So that's something everybody can benefit of. Um, the United States is really well advanced in the body-worn cameras. There's a nice policy on the ICP website available for everybody. And I can go further and further and further. All these best practices are developed in the committees or within ICP, available for all members. No, I, I think what Patrick says is right because, you know, the challenges are there and then it's making sure. And I think that the, it's the same issue. It, it, you have to look at the scale and the complexity depending on the size of the service. But I think identifying what the issues are are identifying the solutions, where the policies and what practices work in different places, and then exploring how they can be transferred between jurisdictions. Because it's fascinating, isn't it? Because we talked all week about building trust in communities, and communities are obviously fairly small, and, and yet it, 133 countries are represented and you face the same issues very same challenges and I think the challenges you know the the whole environment of both policing security and intelligence is probably more complex and complicated than ever at the same time you have to deal with those day-to-day -day challenges of making sure that you keep communities safe but you also then have to focus on the changing expectations of the communities that we all serve and the different expectations so trying to change both culturally trying to change the service and improve the service and at the same time providing the day-to-day -day business means Means that we all have to work much closer together for everything from sharing intelligence to sharing best practice and to learning to work together on the ground. Well thank you both very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us. Really interesting. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Thank